below me. So when the board is in the perfect position, um, sideways to us, I can never shoot because Jochen is down there. So basically, in between my two hands here, I cannot fire. And I, the first shot I can fire is behind the road, which makes it more difficult because the boar is already slightly quartering away. In the next drive, Jochen is placed where a large sounder is coming directly towards him. But what appears to be a very good chance to shoot is, in a second, turned into a situation where Jochen cannot make an ethically acceptable shot. A little frustrating for Jochen, but this is the rules of the game. Another thing that I find extremely important, and I always pound on it, but I, I have to say it over and over again, is that the stock needs to fit your body. Um, and therefore, I think custom-made stocks are the only way to go about it in really making your shooting as precise as possible. Because I'm not only talking about the shooting when you are shooting at stationary targets, but especially when you're doing driven shooting. And you have to bring the gun into your shoulder very quickly and then it just needs to fit exactly. So this stock, for example, was made to my measurements. And you can see it looks a little strange, but it was made to my measurements um, and the scope that has been mounted on the gun. And it really makes a huge difference to have a stock made for you and that fits your body perfectly compared to buying just one off the, off the shelf. If you're lucky, one off the shelf can fit to you perfectly. For me, it's not like that. How do I test whether the stock fits to me perfectly? It's very, very easy. I close my eyes, I put up the gun, I open my eyes, and I should be looking straight through the scope, which I am. I'm completely centered in the scope, and I'm looking straight through it. And that's the easiest way of doing it. So if I take the magazine out, it's the end of the drive, we're waiting for the car. So the gun is empty. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly as I said. I'm going to close my eyes, put my gun up, and look into the camera. And hopefully you'll be able to see that my eye is completely centered. And there you should see that I'm perfectly centered. And this will only be possible if the stock is fit perfectly to you. If you have a bad fitting stock, you can make your body adjust to the stock. But that's not what should happen. The wood should be adjusting to how you would prefer it. So, for example, if you have a group of boar coming very fast in a forest, or let's say over a little opening, a road or something, and you need to put up your gun very fast and instead of looking straight through the scope because the stock would be fitted perfectly the stock is not fitted perfectly and you do not look straight through it you have to readjust slightly to then either with your head or putting it up and down and then you will lose very valuable time which should be time for your trigger finger to slowly squeeze the trigger and make a perfect shot if you still have to readjust, those are split seconds you'll use and it will ruin, most likely ruin your shot on that, on, on that animal. Um, so even though it's a little bit of an investment maybe, I think it's money very well invested and these stocks will last for a lifetime. So I, I always think definitely go for a custom made stock. Jochen has spotted some markings on a tree where the boars are wallowing. Here is another tree, and here you can see 
the Kyla go a lot to this tree and they attack the tree with its teeth and the mud goes up till here because they also climb up here because you see here from the teeth from the white boar, one meter sixty high, unbelievable. The kyla go to the trees and attack the trees because they want to show the other kylas this is my area and I don't want to have you here and they want to show how high they can go and how heavy and strong they are. But this is unbelievable. This is nearly one meter seventy high. This is a very nice one. <coughs> Interesting that the the body size is not is not huge in body, but the length of the teeth are still massive. It must be down to good genetics. Look here. Look here. It's an old kind, no? Yeah. It's difficult to, to say how big they will be when they come out, huh? but, but it's two. very rare to shoot two. Very, very rare to yeah. shoot two. <laughs> very nice. Shooting at an acute angle from behind is always difficult as the target becomes much smaller. The next more two needs two shots before it loses consciousness and runs into a tree. Very last drive of the day. It's always the saddest part of the day because it's a long time until tomorrow morning when we go hunting again. I think we might have a good chance to have some boar coming through these rolling hills. This is the last drive of the day, and therefore probably the last chance for Franz Elbricht. But due to the terrain, the Kyler changes direction several times. A wonderful hunting day is over, but already the next morning, the hunters are on their way into the terrain again. The many extraordinary experiences of yesterday have not lessened the hunters' expectations to the coming drives. In the unusually mild autumn weather, it's a pleasure to walk out to the posts. And while the hunters are waiting for their friends to be posted, there is an intense but very quiet chatting going on. Yesterday's experiences are discussed, like the possibilities of this drive. All hunters are hard hit by the wild boar fever and accordingly eager to get started and very excited by the thoughts of what might pass them at their own post. This also goes for Franz Albrecht, who instantly goes through the safety aspects of the post he's been given. So again, in this rim, 
bridge. And in this valley, I'm not going to shoot anywhere to the right of the little stream that we can see. I might take a shot on the left hand side, but then I have to be also very careful not to shoot on top of the hill because it's very flat ground and I won't have a backstop, meaning that the bullet can end up anywhere in hundreds of meters and there's beaters coming out of that direction. But in general, there might just be someone there collecting firewood or something, which we don't know about. So again, better safe than sorry. And I'm only gonna shoot into, into solid ground. The drive is coming from this direction, like that. Already as Franz Albert is getting ready, two roe deer come tripping. When roe deer sense danger, they often run a bit and then stop to make sure to locate what direction the intruder is heading. Often the roe deer will not run very far, typically a few hundred meters, before returning in an arch to their home territory after the intruders have gone. If you're pushing the roe deer correctly towards the hunters, this behavior makes it an easier task to decimate a population of roe deer than many other species. But today we're not hunting roe deer, so Franz Elbrick just enjoys the sight of the gracious animals. Jens's post is a more flat area with relatively dense vegetation, and this makes it a more demanding task to spot the incoming game. Accordingly, he has to be ready to shoot at very short notice. Jens's first Überläufer today was lethally hit in the lungs, but this won't drop it on the spot. He must remember to allow for a little more lead next time. You can tell from Jens's expression that this was a more satisfactory outcome. In slow motion, you can see how Jens utilizes the wide track to swing through and get the red dot sufficiently far ahead for the boars to tumble over dead on the forest floor. With hunters shooting at both sides of him, Jochen is quite aware that the sounder of boars can appear any moment now. From his post, Jochen has a good view of the hilly terrain. Soon a herd of red deer appears, and shortly after that, a sow that quickly decides to make herself scarce. It's a buck, a female. Shoot. Kyla was crossing here the little track, and I did a quick shot, and I think it's lying down. White puffy bar again. Although the Kyla crossed the track faster and in a more perpendicular angle, Jochen was prepared, and the Kyla lies dead a few meters in between the spruces. A herd of red deer comes running. Although it's an impressive sight, you must take care not to be distracted by this. Notice the wild boar approaching in the top left of the picture, which in the end makes a red deer change its course. Thank you. 
Franz Albrecht here makes an astounding demonstration of his extraordinary skills as a marksman and wild boar hunter. During only six seconds, he shoots five wild boars in the same number of shots. Notice how the boars, when fleeing, effectively use the terrain for cover. That is a behavior you must always take into consideration during driven hunts for these animals. Even the red deer uses the ravines to keep covered in the terrain. The drive is over, and the only thing that remains is to drag the bagged animals down to a place where it can be loaded into a car. <clears throat> Next to Jochen's post, a parade of bag boars of different sizes is displayed, and obviously, he is congratulated according to tradition. <laughs> In the next drive, Franz Albrecht can hear something approaching. Is it a boar? It's very nice because I, I had this, this road I could shoot on and I just had to wait until the boar came into the road and was on a on a complete horizontal which makes it easier to swing through because you don't have to because the boar might run out of your sight when it goes down a step so I just I, I followed th um, through from the hind and pressed the trigger just in front of the head Shortly after, another boar is passing Franz Albrecht, but as it is heading towards a fire break, he waits in order not to shoot between the many tree trunks. And surprisingly, an Überläufer comes running the other way. Here we can see the same shot from the opposite direction. In slow motion, it is easy to see where the bullet hits the boar, in this case, where the neck joins the head. Here you can clearly see the exit wound made by the GMX bullet. Oscar Irnemir gets ready at his new posting up at a shooting stand. With the changing weather conditions, he is happy that he's wearing the proper clothing. The jacket and trousers are waterproof on the outside, while the membranes inside ensures that any moisture is removed from the body if he's sweating. In spite of rain and wind, he is still warm and dry, and hereby ready for the best shooting possible. Okay, as you can see, uh, it has stopped raining, and it's quite windy now as well. Uh, it's not it's nothing that's going to bother me as long as we get some boars around here. But we just move from one stand to another because they have seen some tracks just 30, 40 meters out here. So hopefully we'll come in that to those tracks. Very, very good spot. I have the the forest just in front of me. It's open forest, so you can really be selective and really choose whatever pig, prepare for whatever pig comes out. And I have a big street, it's like 20, 25 meters wide to have good space and shooting at. Hopefully just the rain will slow down a bit. Yeah, this can be good, I think. Very good. Oscar can see that the boars will cross the forest road in a moment, but the question is how far away they will do this. 
Unfortunately for Oscar, the boars are too far away to offer a decent chance to shoot. To make matters worse, the rain has now turned into snow, which further reduces the visibility. It's the quickest weather change I've ever seen. It went within two minutes from the most beautiful, cold, winter, sunny day into winter, snow storm weather mode just hope it finish finishes early because i'm really not dressed for for weather like this because it was we were expecting to be to have beautiful weather all day five minutes ago it started snowing i think another five minutes later we will have a white ground which is good so you see the white boar very early and I hope it will stop in half an hour so that we get better condition. The hunters were lucky. It was only a shower of snow, and soon the visibility is good again. There is even a population of fallow deer at this district, but even this beautiful buck cannot distract Jens, who can hear something come running. At this short range, Jens places the GMX bullet at the neck of the Überläufer. The changes of weather continues, and this makes the game move. This benefits Jorgen. He managed to make a nice double. There was a group of white boar coming. Um, was a female with Frischlinge. Oscar is still waiting, and now it starts to snow again. It just starts to snow. Makes it a little bit harder to see. Finally, it looks like Oscar's patience is rewarded. Second one. 